Hello and welcome, my name is Amir and today we are going to solve the puzzle on day 7 of Advent of Code 2023. As you can see I have already solved this and I got my stars but I'm going to show you my thought process and how I solved the puzzle. So let's go and see what the puzzle is about in the first place. So we have a camel games here. It's something like the game of poker. Well, but there are some differences in between. We have these cards, which are ace, king, queen, jack, tens, and nine to ten. And of course, this is much stronger than this, and so forth and so on. And then we would draw hands and get five cards. If five cards are the same, like this, we have five aces, then this is the highest hand that we can get. Then it's four of a kind, so we have four, for example, aces and one eight. Then we have full house, which means three of a kind. For now, we have three threes. And two other are the cards with another label. So, for example, two twos here. Then we have three kind, something like this, three tens, one nine and one eight. Two pairs, one pair and high card. So this is pretty similar to poker I say pretty because in poker we don't have five of a kind but in poker we have for example flush and uh, straights but we don't have them here and uh, there are cases that two hands might be of the same set so to say so for example we could have two pairs one pair something like this and one pair for example two tens two nines and one eight and here it describes how they win but if two hands are the same we would check the ordering by comparing the first card in each hand so for example something like this that we have two fours then in poker this would win because it has ace four aces but we have four threes here but in this game we would check three against two and since three is greater than two then this wins against this and in the end this is the puzzle input for each hand we get a bid value we need to sort these hands based on weak to strong and the weakest will get its index multiplied by the bid so an index starts from one so this would get for example if this is the weakest it would get one times 765 and so forth and so on and then we add the values together to get to the final answer so let's see how we can solve it my thought process was like this for each of the line i would get the card and i would a hand and i would get the bit i don't do anything with this the first thing is that i would get these values and sort them by the rank and then second rank so to say then i would get the sorted input and then multiply each of them by their bit values so let's see how we can do this so here I'm um, in the first I'm getting the lines by splitting by new line then I would sort these lines I will split it by space to get the hand so this is hand A this is hand B then I would do the sorting which I will cover in a minute and in the end when the lines are sorted we just uh, reduce them to a value by getting the bit and then multiply it by the index plus one so pretty standard here but how does this sort hand works this is the sort hands but before going to this I would provide a value for each of these ranks because I want to you know compare them by their values so here I get two hands from the lines that I have here then I would uh, compare them if hand A wins, then I would return minus 1, which means that this will go up, gets the lower index, and this will go down. Similarly, if the B wins, then they will switch places. And if they both have the same ranking, then I need to do the tiebreaker, which is the second rule uh, that we have here. And how does the tiebreaker rules? Well, as described here, we need to get each card from left to right and see which one is greater so here I would get each of the cards and I would check 
if that card is not a number, which means it might be 10, ace, king, queen, or jack, then we would get the values. I forgot to show this. So this card values is an object here that would provide a value for each of the cards that we have here. By comparing these two or these two, we get to here. If the hand A wins against hand B, then we return minus one. Again, just like here, otherwise we return one. So, but I didn't cover this get rank here. So how does get rank works? Get rank is a function here that for each of the hands will provide the rank for that one. When we get the hand, we need to find the hand set. And what is the hand set? Hand set is something like this. If I have like, for example, and then this, I need to say, I have three t t's or tens. I have one jack and I have one king, like this, so that I can use these values. So that is done here. Then we go up again to this handset. So how does this work? This is pretty interesting to see. So I would get for each of the handset the key. And based on that key, I would get the value. So for example, suppose that I have uh, A and it's five, or I have A is four and uh, Jack is two, uh, sorry, one. If I get to this and uh, I would get the handset, it would be five, then value is five, I would return seven. So this is covered. Now, if I get to do this, either I get four and one or one and four if they are replaced. Now I would go here. I won't cover one here. One will be in the end. If in if in the four I get to a four, I would return six. I know that there is a four of a kind here. Right. Now if I have a three of a kind, and um, let's see. Jack is like two, and here I have three A's, and one Jack, and one King, and I have like two A's, two Jack, and let's say one King, something like this. So if I get to a case like this, either it's three, two, or two, three, I would go here. If my value is three, and I have already found another pair, or the value is two, and I have found the three, then it's a full house. Let's skip this and this and get to here. If I get a three in either of these cases, I know that there is a three in my hand. So either it's a full house or it's a three. Then in the next run, I would go here and check. If the next value is two and I have a three, which is like this, then I would return five, it's a full house. The other way around, if this is ace is two and jack is three, then the other would happen. I would go here the val is two and that uh, and I don't have a pair so I would go here sorry so I have a pair I would go up and in the next run I would go here the next one is three and I have a pair so I will return five great so these three are covers now I need to see two pairs and one pairs if I get to this I have found a pair and the next one is also a pair, then I return three. And this will cover the two pairs and this will cover the, uh, sorry, and this will cover the three, which means that I have found the three, but it's not a full house. So I will return four and here I would return two. If it's none of these, it's a high pair and I would return one. 
I hope it's clear. So yeah, and in the end, uh, we just we just return the value and it just works. Now to get to part two. In the part two, J is not the weakest. Is not Jack. It's a Joker, and it can be converted to either of these cards, so to say. So for example. As described here, if I have something like this, Q, two jacks, and then Q, and then two, this can be considered as a four of a coin because these two jacks can be converted to queens, and then we would have four queens here. Similarly, this can be a four of a coin because the jack can be converted to king. It can also be considered a full house converting jack to two which would give us three kings and two twos but the four of a kind would be the full house so if i go to part two everything is the same i have just uh, decreased the value of j to zero the reading part and doing the calculation is just the same hands sorting getting the ranks and getting the hand sets and tiebreakers all of them are all of them are the same there is only one thing that is changing here and that is getting all the possibilities here in the sorting hands for each of the hands i would get all the possibilities of them and would only consider the highest possibility for each so what I, what do i mean this function if there is no jack in the hand, then I would return the hand. There is one possibility that is the hand itself. So for example, T, 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 and then K does not have any jack, so it will be this possibility only. For all the other cases, when there is at least one jack here, I would replace jack with all the cards inside. So, so if I have T, 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 then J and K, can convert to two hands either this J will be converted to T or this J will be converted to K right and then based on these two I would get the one that is higher and that's what this function does and then this sort hands here will be a bit different from part one where we only consider these two but here there is one more step and that is we get all the possibilities for one hand and get the rank of all those possibilities sort them by rank and then provide the zero which means the highest one in the rank and then the rest is the same so yeah, this is about it for this puzzle. I hope you have enjoyed the video. If there are any recommendations or suggestions, please provide a comment. And uh, see you in the next video.